these are very important sites which has given us knowledge about our human evolution. The future of this place is very rich because there are a lot of fossils that have been found here. Before the, the, the current opening, there never used to be a time when the public would interact with the fossil preparators. How do you do it? What does it take? How long can it take? And also they will get to see how those fossils actually get preserved. As guests come past the museum and exit, uh, having visited the temporary exhibit, uh, then they would wind their way up to the top of the Stoke Fontaine Hill. Uh, there they would find the cave entrance and they would start to descend deeper and deeper into Stoke Fontaine until they reached this, which is pretty close to the, the lowest portion of the cave. And this is our biggest chamber. The elephant chamber, also called the Milner Hall, is a chamber that we're also actively excavating. And so visitors might see people working, whether they're student groups or specialist researchers, working in excavations. There is a lit tour route that runs uh, through the caves and then exits the caves at a, a very famous sort of bronze bust called the broom bust. Uh, on that tour, they may have seen bats. They might see evidence of porcupines that also live in the cave um, and they will have learnt about the geology and the, the growth of the stalagmites and stalactites and the fossilisation process uh, as an open sort of a interface between researchers, preparators and the public before winding their way back to the museum uh, where they can take more time to, to engage with everything that they've learnt already. What that will be happening and I would invite the public to really come and visit the Red Stuck Fountain Caves.